Hi, Wycliffe Barrett here, X Plane Dedicated. It's going to be a very, very short vlog about some technical aspects of X Plane 11. See you right after the intro. Good afternoon, here, Port Roger, 2000 feet. Okay, so here I am. I've just taken off and uh, at Lugano and uh, just thought I'd have a quick fly around whilst I talk about a couple of things to do with x 11. Now this, this is not, I'm not going to talk about the Cessna, I'm not talking about the scenery or anything like that. I'm actually just going to talk about a couple of things regarding x 11 that you may not have seen um, whilst you've been looking around. Uh, and the reason why you might not have seen it is because, of course, uh, some of this is on Ben Sutnick's blog. Um, and also something that uh, Austin Mayer has uh, discussed as well in uh, the last day or so. So I think the first thing that I want to talk about is uh, Ben Sutnick uh, developer blog. Um, and whilst his blog is incredibly good, it is also quite complex because he does... He is a developer. He's one of the lead developers on X-Plane. Uh, and so some of the stuff that he says is really quite complicated and a little bit left field, as we say. But what he said, and let me just turn this down, the sound down in uh, the simulator. It's a bit louder than I anticipated. So let me just turn that down there and that down there. So I'm not shouting. That's better. So, on his blog, he wrote, it, it, it is too soon to update your X-Plane 10 add-on to version 11. Um, and basically, this is a response to something that's been happening in, since X-Plane 11 came out. So what has been happening is that people uh, all over the place is they're making modifications, <laughs> they're making modifications to some of the products in the hope, hang on, in the hope that everything will work. Now, that is a bit of uh, foolishness. It's a bit silly to do that because, as Ben says, basically what will happen is a new beta will come out of X-Plane 11 and it will break things. So, uh, I could read direct from his blog and I think I will read a little bit for you. So. Um, the title says it all. It's too soon to update your add-on to X-Plane 11. Uh, and so this is for developers really, but it's pertinent to all the people out there that are doing silly things to aircraft making patches. If your add-on does not work with X-Plane 11, you and we do not know if this is because of an intentional removal of functionality, some of which has happened, or because of a bug. Plain and simple, yeah? If the problem is a bug and you modify your add-on to work around the bug, it's very likely that a future public beta will simply break this new work and you would have been better off with the old functionality. So, in other words, don't don't fix your aircraft to work because when I release the next X-Plane 11 beta, uh, it, it won't work again. Updating to X-Plane 11 in the public beta need to follow some specific steps right so this is really quite straightforward testing and discovery if you have an add-on please do test it and report bugs and incompatibilities explain is incredibly complex and there are almost infinite combinations of features used in add-ons so we can't just look at the code and go oh x will work y will not sometimes we get surprised uh, the bug feedback we've gotten so far has been great so the what is happening is uh, ben and laminar is saying by all means put in your uh, put in your uh, aircraft but rather than fixing them to work tell tell laminar why they're not working yeah which makes eminent sense rather than fixing it and doing nothing. They're saying, well, tell us why it's not working and we'll be in a better position to try and fix that. So, in essence, that the article is quite large by Ben Sutton, and I'm not going to go into too much detail about it, but because it, it's rather complex, you're better off going to his site and reading that yourself. Um, he talks about lit panel backgrounds, and he talks about 3D panels, and then uh, the gamma... Um, function within X-Plane 11. He also talks about 
XPLM navigation API and, and a few other things which are really quite technical. My advice is, as always, if you can, go and have a look at Ben's blog, or blog, um, I'll put a link in the description below, um, have a read, as I say, in parts it's incredibly technical, but you know, once you get to grips with it, it's not that bad. So that, that's that, that's the one thing I wanted to talk about. The other thing is, um, Austin has been writing on xplain.org, uh, and but he is writing about uh, X-Plane 11 Beta 3. So at the moment we're on Beta 2, and he's been writing about X-Plane 11 Beta 3. And he, he, he's actually talked about a bug that has been in X-Plane for the last 20 years uh, and was identified by somebody else. And uh, Austin has said, I'm glad he's found this because now we can fix it. So a bug that's been there for 20 years in X-Plane, uh, right from the very beginning. Uh, so Beta 3 is coming later this week. And he talks about that and he talks about tyre force modelling uh, when the plane is not moving and what, what that moves. And that is incredibly interesting actually, because uh, it mentions the notion that you know, the pl even though the plane is stationary at stand, the aircraft is moving all the time. So um, it's it's moving as more fuel is put into it. It's moving as the wind catches the aircraft. It's moving as passengers get on board. Uh, but that movement is all registered through the tyres on the ground, and originally they've modelled uh, tyre force as the tyre just simply being stuck to the ground but now they've changed that and they've still got tyre force modelling but now rather than it just being stuck to the ground the tyres the actually behave in a different fashion they're still stuck to the ground but they behave differently uh, tyre walls will move and things like that um, so I mean once again I could read this um, and what I'll do, I'll try and read the, the dynamics of the non-dynamic situation, okay? Um, so here's the dynamics, all right? The tyre force model in X-Plane is good enough to use in a driving racing simulator as it actually gets right down to the vector along which the rubber is dragged across the pavement on the contact patch of the tyre. The dynamics are really quite good, especially in X-Plane 11, where... I have taken on tyre modelling the updates from uh, Stradali. Okay, so that's paragraph one. Let me just move this on a bit so I can read it again. Uh, but this physical model has facial flaws. The model that simulates the detail right down to how the rubber interacts as it is being dragged across the pavements only works when the rubber is being dragged across the pavement. Huh? So when does it not work when you are stopped, okay? So when an, whenever an aircraft and next plane has been stopped, I simply locked the airplane down, bypassing the tyre model altogether. No motion, no flight model. This sounds right. Wrong. During the run-up, the plane is indeed motionless, but the forces acting on the airplane via the landing gear, landing gear are hugely important. As you add power, for example, the force opposing the propeller thrust is coming from the contact is coming from the tire contact patch far below the propeller this aft force far below the prop opposing the forward motion of the prop creates a torque that lowers the nose when power is applied with the brakes on and it goes on and on and on you should feel this on short field takeoffs when you have power holding the brakes and the nose goes down on the aircraft. So that when you release the brakes, the nose pops up as the nose gear strut is unloaded and it is off you go. Uh, and that is very, very real, without a doubt. So what Austin has done, he's added all of those factors now into X-Plane 11 regarding tyre tire wall pressure and tyre pressure. It's absolutely stunning uh, and really does make a heck of a difference. Um, so they, 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 they're doing all this, and this is going to be out in X-Plane 11 Beta 3, which is going to be fascinating. I'm just going to move the camera over here as I come into land at Lugano. So lots and lots and lots of exciting stuff coming up. Um, there's a whole list 
of uh, improvements in beta 3 uh, but and this is the thing even with all of those improvements we need to realize that x-plane 11 is still in beta and as it's beta 3 it's early beta so some things will work others won't somebody asked me have i got the 767 to work in uh, x-plane 11 i haven't uh, I can't generate icons for it properly. Um, sometimes it does generate the icons, other times it doesn't. So, you know, you've got to be aware that X-Plane 11 is beta and that some aircraft will not work with it, um, which is perfectly obvious as, as to why that might be. Okay, so a short vlog just giving you some information. As always, uh, I hope you find it useful. If not, then uh, fine. If you do find it useful, uh, hit the thumbs up, give me a like, and uh, don't forget to subscribe and share my videos wherever you wish. Here we go. Oh, that was a bit hard. A bit hard, but not to worry. We're down, nothing's broken. I didn't dig the aircraft into the ground, so that's the main thing. Let's just apply those brakes. Gotta be careful that we don't apply them too hard, otherwise you'll uh, dig the prop into the ground. I've seen that happen more than once here. Oh, there we go, nice little flight around Lugano, um, northern Italy. Brilliant. Okay, hope you find it useful and we'll see you all soon. Cheerio. Bye-bye. Yeah.